On September 12th, Apple will reveal the iPhone 15 and make the transition from its long running lightning connector to USB C. Thanks for watching 9 to 5 Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Over a decade ago, when a similar switch was made from the 30 pin connector to lightning, it caused a firestorm among Apple faithful. And that's because many people had invested money into various accessories that use that 30 pin connector. Nearly a dozen years later, and we're on the precipice of another significant IO change. This time going from lightning to USB-C. But there will be no firestorm this time. At least there shouldn't be. Unlike the switch to lightning, which was spearheaded by Apple leadership, the switch to USB-C is one of legislative necessity. That's because European regulation mandating the switch to USB-C is set to take place next year. Despite its hand being forced, Apple will no doubt try to describe this change as one for the benefit of users with nary a mention of government regulation. And for the most part, I'm going to agree with the picture that Apple will attempt to paint about the benefits of the transition. Unlike the previous change to Lightning, there are several reasons why the move to USB-C will be a much more palatable change for customers. For starters, Apple's Lightning connector was a brand new connector that was debuting with the release of the iPhone 5. So up until then, no one owned a Lightning connector. No one had pretty much seen a Lightning connector before the iPhone 5 was released. The transition to Lightning was jarring because it required all new cables and all new accessories. And granted, you could purchase adapters, but that's never really an ideal situation. No doubt, it was about as drastic of an IO change as you could probably conceive at the time. USB-C, on the other hand, despite being new to the iPhone lineup, is a much more ubiquitous connector. Android phones have been using USB-C for years. And honestly, with that in mind, one could argue that the move to USB-C removes one of the barriers that can make it easier for those who are waffling between Android and iPhone to make the switch back to Android. But the reverse is also true as well. The fact is USB-C is much more widespread than just being featured on the latest Galaxy or Pixel phone. USB-C can be found on my Nintendo Switch. USB-C is found in my car. It's found on my exercise bike. It's found on my camera. It's found on my microphone. USB-C is everywhere already. Chances are, if you're the type of person that is interested in purchasing an iPhone 15 on day one, you already own plenty of accessories that use USB-C. You already have plenty of USB-C cables and plenty of power adapters. But what makes the move even less of a problem is that Apple has already been using USB-C in some form since back in 2015. Yes, USB-C was first introduced into the Apple ecosystem back in April of 2015 with the release of the 12 inch MacBook, which was a severely underpowered but very forward thinking product at the time. A year later, USB-C became much more prominent with the release of the 2016 MacBook Pro, controversial butterfly keyboard in tow. Since the release of that MacBook Pro, Apple has released tons of products with USB-C. You have various MacBook models with USB-C. You have, you know, the iPad, the iPad Pro, the iPad Air, the iPad Mini, all with USB-C. Then you have the iMac, the Mac Studio, the Mac Pro, even the HomePod Mini, and Apple's Siri Remote uses USB-C. And Apple already sells a plethora of USB-C accessories in its store. When you go to search for USB-C on the Apple Store, you'll find no less than five pages of results, all featuring products with USB-C. That ranges from basic cables to power banks to docks, hubs, external drives, etc. And when Apple reveals the iPhone 15 with USB-C, it's going to pause and talk about some of the advantages that having that port brings to the table. And Apple will be right to do so because 9to5Mac has learned that at least some of the models reveal on September 12th will support faster 35 watt charging thanks to that USB Type-C connector. And along with faster charging, USB-C is going to allow for much faster data speeds. Up until now, the iPhone has been limited to USB 2 speeds on the Lightning connector. That's 480 megabits per second, which is ridiculously slow when you're considering that the iPhone can shoot 4K 30 frames per second HDR ProRes video, which results in gargantuan files that would take forever to transfer from your computer to your iPhone via that lightning connector. I mean, it's ridiculous. But for many, including myself, the biggest convenience would be not having to take 
two types of cables with you when you travel. I can't tell you how many times I grabbed a cable, thought it was a lightning cable, and it ended up being USB-C or vice versa. Now, just one cable, one USB-C cable. The same cable that I use to connect to my MacBook is the same cable I can use now to connect to my iPhone. The same cable that I use to charge my iPad is the same cable that I can use to charge my iPhone. That is good news. So yes, it might sting a bit to make the switch from Lightning to USB-C. Yes, you're gonna to have to get rid of some cables. Yes, if you don't already own USB-C accessories, you're gonna to have to upgrade. But I think we can all agree that the switch to USB-C is a win for customers, and it'll be nowhere near as painful as the transition from the 30-pin connector to the Lightning connector. So yes, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section, and I apologize for my voice. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.